to be happy because especially on a map like this, if he, if he baits too much, if he's not having an impact in that sense, he can just give up the whole game for his team. He can also be the guy where he can pick off key lurkers and he can win the whole game. So I think he's still a quality player and I hope in this match we'll, we'll see the happy we know, not the guy he's kind of descended into becoming over the last few months. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. As you can see, the map overlay has started. It is gonna be cash. Envious taking on Gambit Gaming. Again, the loser will go home. The winner will fight another day. Bringing you the action this time, Sadikus and Henry G. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Scoots. Yes, I'm just sitting up here slightly relieved that my skin will remain untouched and untainted by a tattoo of a snake. But Envious, defending champions, Henry, back against the wall early in this tournament. Yeah, people aren't looking that confident about them either. Here we go then, up against Gambo Gaming. The pistol round has started. We're on cash, and it's going to be Envious on the T side here as well. Four sets of armor, Apex on the utility as well. It's looking actually an interesting tactic here. I can see three players towards the squeaky door, and we've got a little bit of aggression from Dosia as well towards A main. Apex waiting for him, and this looks like a, probably an explosive tactic coming in here. Good positioning from the CT to get intel, but the fallback from that squeaky door area could prove problematic. Gambit, considered by many as the dark horse in this tournament, had a decent qualifier when teams there didn't know much about them. Could be a threat, as long as Envious get a good start. That will all be commenced, I guess you could say, by NBK. But look at Waylander pushing up. He takes the fight immediately back, and he's got three headshots immediately. Bomb dropped down. He's got control of the map, and despite that Mo is low HP, he finds Happy at middle. It's all down to the man who opened up the frags. Fortunately for him, it's Mo and Waylander on very low HP. But what a way to take the fight back. You lose one out towards Squeaky, and suddenly you just take mid immediately away. Well, this is the thing. Envious actually had three players towards it. They find the pick, and normally when you do that kind of strategy, you're pushing the bomb site, you're getting in and taking advantage of the situation. They fell back, and Waylander's already got positional control of the mid warehouse, and all of a sudden, three amazing head from him. Can't take anything away from that. And here we go then, a three-on-one situation. MBK with the bomb towards that squeaky door right now. It's quite a passive setup from the CTs towards the A-bomb site. They're not going to allow him to get out. I'm sure they're going to be spotting it any second. There it is, and now they're going to be aware of his position. Do what he can with this bomb, because him getting this down, and he should, based on this angle, will allow an earlier buy. Again, still a lot of work to do. Now, they need to be sure that Adren is careful about how he approaches this situation, because, again, it's low HP on two, so fortunately they have grouped up. But it's Adren that goes down early. There's a real chance for NBK, 26 HP. It's not great wow. either. And Moe's going to find the shot over top of the box. Look how low the HP of the remaining CTs was as well. That was very close indeed. Once NBK found that first kill, he had a real chance of doing that. He gets the bomb down, so it's not all lost here, but Envious had such a huge advantage there. Obviously, we've got Happy at the helm of the calling now as well, Matt. Obviously, that's a change coming in from the last few weeks. And that was an interesting decision from him, I have to say. Getting that pick onto the A-bomb site, you've had three players already committed to that side of the map, inside the squeaky door, no less. And for me, once you get that kill, you're, you're getting onto the site. You're taking over at that point, but they decided to fall back. Wayland is stepping up massively there. And ultimately, Envious do lose the pistol, but they did get the bomb down. And actually going to be going for the straight-up force by this round. So we've got Galos, PT-50s, Deagles, everything. They're going for it. So most teams will normally go for the, the save round on this number two. But uh, it's MBK opening things up there onto Hooch. Takes him down the headshot with the Galil. And now they have got the advantage as well. And this is one of the things that's tainted Envy's success in some ways. It's something we often talk about is how aggressive they are with the buys. But crucially, NBK does start this off well with said rifle. And he goes very low, down to 11 HP, drops off the initial boost as they try to evaluate what exactly was going on toward mid. It's like a dream scenario for them, right? The CTs aren't really expecting this Gillard to be coming out of the start. He's going for the face, wants to get that early information for the rush. Gets his head ripped off by MBK, and now they've got a real chance of this. Going towards that A-bomb site, can just do simple smokes here, stick together. There's going to be Kenny S who's on 11 HP, but they can just slow things down, bleeding the CTs out. You can see they've got one flashbang remaining as well. NVS still have smoke grenades, flashbangs, and molotovs as well. It's looking very promising for them. Oh, crosses. Molotov out behind quads. We can't go all the way over, but he gets himself in decent position to spot up two coming into the site. It's Doja, though, that does find the kills on entry. But it's two versus three in the post plant. So once more, Envy do get a bomb out down, excuse me, with this early plant or the early buy. And again, with the main advantage, but Doja is going to find Devil going inside of the smoke. That's going to bring this back to two versus two. No kits out on either of the CT players. Waylander finds Apex, though, and it's happy far away with an MP7 who needs to try and make this happen early, okay. and it's Waylander once more that will pick up a multiple kill round and take the fight immediately back to Envious. Well, Waylander was the hero of the pistol. He does similar antics here on the second round. Force by from Envious. They get the bomb down once again, but still a round you heavily favored for them. They had the man advantage. They have the utility going into the bomb site there. 
just unable to make the exchanges work for them favorably. Comes down to that two on one, and Apex caught in a horrible position. MP7 in hand, and didn't really have vision of the bomb either. And this is Dosia from this spawn area, just getting killed through the smoke, doing a lot of damage as well. And that's ultimately what saved them there. So we go into round number three. It's not going to be much invested into this by Envious. We're going to see Devil with the PT50 and body armor. He's pretty much the heavy by here. Apex MBK with Desert Eagles. I mean, the interesting thing about this is it'll go 3 nothing as per standard, and they'll still get a buyout in the fourth round because they got that second bomb plant. Oh, so it's course. not like that force is actually going to make it any worse than what you'd see in a typical scenario. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. If you get the bomb down in both those rounds, you're okay. You're going to recover. But um, here we go. Then Gambit Gaming have got five rifles. This should be a throwaway round. It'll be the case of Envious trying to get that bomb down once again. If someone could go absolutely massive with a Deagle, as we see Apex boosted up here, that could be interesting. But the CT shouldn't really be giving anything away at this point. He's up there as well. Okay. Just showing, but it's a Dread instead that goes down to that Deagle as Apex had it lined up perfectly. So it's a second one inside the Z connector as well. Chance for the double, but falls away instead. Nonetheless, again, they find the early pick. And if bomb plants have been the praise, there's chance for another here because they can start to divide and conquer this defense who have split themselves and gone more passive, not wanting to overextend and get caught out. In the situation where rifles are still in their favor, it's going to be huge to come back down the highway. Join up with Mo. Apex has dropped into the cubby, but look at Waylander's position because they just rotated Mo away from him, and it looked like he was going to come under pressure early. They actually headshot him as well, so Waylander's gone down to 28 HP. Envious now slowly but surely edging their way in towards middle and the B storage as well. It's going to be Mo picking up MBK, but the execution will be coming to the B site momentarily to assume, but it seems like Gambit are recovering this situation. Now there's going to be one player remaining, that's Kenny S in a 4-on-1. From what looked like a promising round from that initial kill from Apex, it's falling Part now. Kenny S does pick up the kill on Samo. I think that's all he's going to be getting out of this as the bomb is down towards the CTs in the site right now. Okay, he's going to just rotate back around, try and pick up that bomb again. Just the Deagle to work with. Three against him. Waylander still deep inside the site, not wanting to peek with that 28 HP. But Kenny's got an angle that he may force that issue. And although the flank was looking to come in from Hooch, He's not quite close enough. He just wants this plan. It's a decent effort considering the situation, but Waylander's going to deny that. Always was. Yeah, the CTs wanted to try and kill him after the time of that, but obviously when you're trying to plant the bomb, you don't really have much of a choice going into that one. So it is going to be a 3-0 in favor of Gambit. Great start for them. Envious, we saw the... I don't know if you catch, caught him before the match started in the huddle. A lot of screaming and shouting from their side of the, the stage there. What are your thoughts? Do you feel like... Uh, I mean, if you're that... that down on yourself sometimes you, you fake it till you make it you get that confidence rolling you know do what you can dig deep how much is genuine out of that is is up for debate i think they're just looking for ways to scrape the bottom of the barrel and and get their footing as a team in this tournament because again defending champions yes they've been in a slump but did we expect them to be in this position in the groups this early that's that's the whole other story in all of this remember well, how crazy is that the, the current champions having to really dig deep to go up against gambit gaming actually we're worried whether they can actually beat them that's kind of nuts right that's an, it's an insane storyline and Again, Gambit, no slouch. They've got the early lead on the CT side as well. They're going to stick with the five M4s, only one of which is an A1. Still relative in certain situations, relevant in certain situations, but it's the op to come out for Kenny. Good to see that he'll be wielding the weapon early. There's no change of play in that. Flash over, catches Devil slightly, who takes no damage from that Molotov. It didn't quite reach into the corner, but it did slow them down trying to push into events. They'll get through regardless. They've cleared it out. They had a second player back out toward NBK in those tunnels, so they were catch anyone that was inside of it. It's only two in the site. They're going to rotate a Dren over, but he's so low on HP. It's once again Waylander who has to come up and good with a counter entry. Happy finds the lurk in mid. Mo goes down inside of the vents. There's no chance they'll pinch Envious in their play. Despite dropping down the bomb, though, it might have worked out for timing. It still is a two versus two, and they've got to recover that smoke out in front of CT spawn to allow it. But Doji and Hooch have decent information to relay off each other, and Hooch is going to find the first kill. Happy might get the trade, but Doji knows exactly where he is at this point. Yeah, Hooch didn't really have to commit to that situation. They knew the bombers as well. They had a crossfire set up. Now it's up to Doji. Can he find him? He actually can as well. Headshot on the Happy. Envious can't find the round. Looked like a very promising situation. Nice mid control and a decent B split coming as well. Found the entries, but the hold on the side was just too strong from Gambit there. Like I said, that. Face from Hooch was a little bit too much for me, but uh, those are coming out on top, and that's going to be 4-0. And without the plan as well, Envious should be on a pretty much eco here. You can see they've got one player on $4,200. That will be happy. He was doing the classic lurk roll, as we expect him to do towards the middle. That actually worked out very well. Got the kill towards Vents, coming in for the flank as well. But uh, just not delivering the goods there. So we're going to round number five. Just going to be pistols and some body armor as well. Apex is going to be the first to walk in toward A main. Devil to cover the doorway. Again, eyes on him, the new boy. It always puts pressure when you come into a top roster, a top team. 
as someone who's less established. And in fairness to him, it's not like he alone is the problems on this team right now. He is of trying course. to be the remedy, so it's always going to be hard on the guy. But we'll, we'll touch on this after this round, but this is an interesting one from MBS. This is a very simple A take. They normally do smokes out, flashes come in, and it's going to be Adren picking up the first kill. Takes down Kenny S, and it looks like a very simple cleanup so far for the CTs. As I say that, Devil does find Adren. Bomb is still by the squeaky door, though. Still doing a clear on get that down. Four on two. Probably just another plan coming in here before the round slips away. At least they do get the bomb down with the five rounds that will be against them. But it is going to be only one taken away. Kits on all four that remain happy. Just the pistol now remaining at four. Clifty is going to try and get the peek on Hooch. Goes late. He'll be able to bait them out one by one here. Nearly gets Mo as well as he goes very low. So the point I just want to make about Devil is, like, it's kind of interesting to see us go, right? Like, we never really have any sort of downtime between tournaments. It's just tournament, 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 tournament. So, obviously, here in Croatia, it's the first time you actually got to use him. And you have, they've, they've come into this event, they've changed the caller as well. Like, where's the time to actually practice and actually implement this strategy and make sure it's actually working across the board? It must be so difficult for a player like him to come into this. And there's a lot of experiments going on. They need to probably, it's hard to say we need to take a step back from events. Obviously, you've got majors coming up and all these big, big tournaments. And uh, it's a lot of pressure on him, but yeah, absolutely right. It's not like it's his fault whatsoever. He's just coming in and doing his thing, right? So there we go. 5 0, though, in favor of Gambit. This is a round that's very important indeed. We have got Kenny on the AWP. And they've got course. Mo. Yeah, he picked up Kenny's from the last mm. round, or rather two rounds ago, so he didn't have to invest into this. And they get it, so it's going to try and shut them down early. With that AWP and early indeed because Moe's gone aggressive toward the squeaky door. Gambit's willing to take the fight, but Happy's waiting for it. He's going to get it with the AK. That drops the op already and forces a rotation out of middle with a minute and 30 seconds for Envious to finally work around. Yeah, Moe went for that aggressive AWP face towards the squeaky door. Does get punished for it as well. Doesn't actually land any damage either. So once again, Envious do have that man advantage. Kenny has boosted up towards middle. Trying to scout out any info, but so far the CTs have adjusted themselves back towards that A bomb site, seeing if they can potentially flash in. Obviously, a lot of CT teams will react in these situations. Cash is a classic Counter Strike map in that sense. As soon as you lose the first player, you want to be trying to gain real estate back on the map, getting some intel. But it's looking like Envious will be flashing themselves out towards the middle, trying to get the next frag, and there it is. Devil does take down Hooch. Huge advantage now. This should be and surely be the round that gets him on the board. Waylander again, though, inside of B, just has MBK evaluating what's going on. The interesting thing in all this is Adren's position. It's Kenny that waits for it, because if Waylander can anchor and Adren could force, funnel out the offense, the way he's been holding in this site, you might have given them a chance to find one or two on entry, but good kill by Kenny, opens things back up, and there you go, case in point, Waylander still finds MBK. Despite that it's not commitment, it's Doji to go down, that opens A, Happy's lurked all the way through CT, and there's no chance for Waylander to even save here. No, it's Happy, went for that Z connector there, did find the kill towards the truck and that was the split discovered as well so like you said Waylander stuck in a horrible position now yeah, she may not get away with this it doesn't look like Happy's going to be committing just yet yeah I said no way to save if he kills off Happy but it's not like it's comfortable he's definitely got Happy lurking in his proximity well the good news is for Envious here this is a relatively clean round for them they only lose one frag there in the form of MBK so even if they were to lose the next they still should have some cash available but uh, here we go then Waylander look how weary Happy is about pushing this too because he knows that their money situation is not worth dropping the gun for but he'll get him nonetheless. Waylander gets impatient. Finally, Envious on now. This is what we always talk about, and this is why that gun was so important, because this is the reset potential against Envious at 5-1. Seven rounds in the middle of the half. That's almost worst-case scenario. It's going to be two players on pistols here. Can they drop anything for them? I can see two pistols. Don't I'm sure those drops gone down. We'll see what they can bring to the table. You're absolutely right. This is a difficult round, actually, for Gambit. They've got two 5.7s, M4s, and Mo on the AWP. He was a player that went aggressive last round, did get taken down. And you feel like they took the game towards Envious there, who capitalized on that point. But let's see what they bring to the table this time. Looks like a much more passive setup from Mo. He's just going to be towards that quad area. He's going to be joined by Dosia at the forklift area. And the default setup from Kenny and Apex. One inside of A-Main on the rifle. That's Apex with his back turned, waiting for the flash. And Kenny with the initial peek, if anyone pushed through blindly. The fall off of that, seeing that there will be no early A aggression, so Gambit altering their playbook slightly. And the fact that they have gone aggressive in some and passive in the others, it's a Dren that's inside middle, one of the said players on pistols, as you mentioned, smoked off already as well, and without that firepower, has to sit back and give up middle. The Molotov to clear the vent's already gone through, NBK out in the tunnels, they've got options to try and rotate, but Hooch is going to find Apex, that'll discourage them from A. This should be a B hit immediately onto a Dren now. Yeah. Apex is get taken down, no reply whatsoever. So four and four, they are going to be heading their way into that B site. MBK is clearing out the halls right now. And Hooch is quite smart based on that pick as well. He's already rotated for this, knowing that A is extremely less likely. Given the situation, it's just right inside the site. Good flash over from Hooch, it nearly works out. 
But instead, Edren does go down. It puts very low, though, Kenny S. He's on 4 HP. Remember, has that AWP. They'll want to keep that up after the bomb goes down. And yep. he'll get a flash to buy space for Kenny to try and move should he elect to because Hooch was the only one in position to shut him down. And he's, again, very, very low. That pistol from that range and the nade that goes over top could have done it. They won't find him just yet. Moe's going to get happy, make this a little bit more possible. One kit, it's on Hooch, who goes through the doorway, dropped in heaven. I think it was flung to the floor, though, so that gives Mo a chance to grab it. If they get that far, it's on Doja now. Down to the one-on-one. -on -one. NBK and P kit grabbed. He has to play this. He needs to find out exactly where Doja is nice. going to be, and it's on the platform. He'll find him. The thing is as well, like you said, Gambit did read that really well. They actually rotated efficiently, but it was only the players of the 5.7s that were available to actually get to the bomb site there. Did what they could, took one down, and it was a relatively successful retake. Comes down to the one-on-one. -on -one. MBK, there's such a stronger position compared to what those heroes, and he had to go pick up the kit, run all the way to the bomb as well. MBK just read it perfectly. And that's going to be Envious picking up their second round. Now that's going to break the economy of Gambit as well. You can see they can't really justify anything whatsoever into this round. Going to be a full save here. So USPs, oh, that cheeky Desert Eagle comes out, make it two as well. So Something to do here, but Envious should be able to read the situation pretty easily now. Just hold back, lock the default, and this approach an area together. So, no smoke this time. On to A main. You might think that Apex, or rather, excuse me, Apex or Envious in general would read that there's a full save as a result of this, mm. because that's fairly default. Oh, he yeah. does get the opening pick with the AK. NBK getting a little pressure over toward B, but he's been playing this toxic position each time. So they are playing the three-man swing on this terrorist side with two players to sort of anchor, around, anchor down either side. And NBK that time gets two gifts effectively walking toward him. It's all on Mo. He's going to go down immediately after an efficient round, crucially, for Envious. Well, the money is starting to build back up for Gambit here. It's not amazing. They've got about 4,400 average. You can see Wellander's a little bit far behind as well. So the good thing is, obviously, when you're going up against AK-47s, you don't need head armor. So body armor, M4s, one kit on towards Mo as well. They have got the smokes, no incendiaries. Still will be a difficult round. This will be one of the times where they want to be flashing into a certain area, maybe checking out a main after 30 seconds or so, trying to get a bit of intel here. When you've got such limited utility and only one kit as well, you want to make sure you try and get a man advantage, try and take something towards the terrorists here. We'll see what they bring to the table. Very default setup so far. And looking like a more faster round from Envious. Boosting up straight away. Mo gets taken down by Apex. And now they have got full mid control as well. Good moments off to clear out the sandbags. But it's happy onto a Dren that will make this even more difficult for Gambit. They try to get aggressive once more. Doja flashed out. Apex already at highway. Had no idea. He wanted to try and take back Amy and get some information for his team. But... Unfortunately, the sex god doesn't get to make the sexy play. He gets cut off entirely by Apex, and now he's only wrapping back through CT. This will trap the defense inside of the B site as the bomb's on A. There's no chance to even get an early rotation in. Yeah, I actually really like this from Envious. They're reading the money situation very well. No, it hasn't been recovered just yet, but Hooch doing everything he can. is burning alive there. Goes down to 3 HP, but they're going to be aware of his position. This should be an easy kill for Happy. Put your nades away, my friend. Let's finish him off. There it is. And now Waylander stuck in an impossible situation. Here's towards that B bomb site, actually at the back. But... Looks like Envious don't care, they want to hunt him down right now, but as of the point I was making is they've been doing very slow default plays so far, Envious, and now mixing it up, taking advantage of the spawn they had, boosting three players over, and just wrecking Mo as they went over the top. The Waylander actually did spot Apex, didn't fire him at first because he wanted to make sure he got information on the right side first, where Happy was playing from tunnels. However, that's changed because Happy snuck by, it walks in slowly and still gives Waylander the chance to save this gun. The money's very healthy for Envious right now, so this isn't a huge deal. Obviously, it's great for Waylander. He's picking up a little bit of extra cash. He does go down in the end. The hands of Devil there. So 5-4, and actually four in a row for Envious as well. The money broken once again for Gambit. Let's see what they've got right now. It's about 3K, and it well, doesn't look like they'll be investing just yet. But uh, Envious definitely coming to life now after that, was that initial 5-0 deficit. Change of pace here, and it's actually Kenny S, who hasn't really had to be massively on point here. Do you know what we've seen in the last few tournaments are like carrying them almost to the Titan levels that's mentioned on the analyst desk. He's actually had a very relatively quiet game. It's Apex has been stepping up the entry kills. MBK has been strong as well. Here we go, round number 10. Should be another throwaway round here. Can't really see Gambit doing anything with this. Devil this time gonna just hold the quick angle from the drop position. Kenny with AWP trying to make a fast play. Hooch is gonna get caught by this, but it is two more inside of the site. Three more, in fact, as a Dren is also boosted up by that generator position. Good read, though, by Team Envious. Happy's gotten all the way through middle as well. He'll be able to cut them off on the rotation. This should be a fairly straightforward yeah, this, round. This round's over. Just going looking forward to the next round. Obviously, mid's been an actual massive problem for Gambit in these uh, last two or three rounds. So 
I'd assume the adjustment will be coming in next. We saw NIP doing it yesterday, the three players towards middle when it starts to become a problem. You have two options of that kind of methodology. You can actually attack it or leave middle completely. Even one person there to kind of get information is getting taken down almost every single round. Isn't that effective? So you either play the AWPA towards the court area or you send three CTs there at the start and try and push them back and not allow them to have full control of the map in that sense. So. We'll see what approach Gambit brings to the table. Their money should be rectified by next round. It's a full loss bonus of five stages next round, so $4,400 on top of the 2K they already have. So we'll be we could go for the double orb setup as well. That would be very viable in this situation also. What do you think, Matt? I think it's time to win rounds for Gambit. Yes, that's what I'm thinking as well. 5 nothing up, down 5-5 five, five as Kenny gets Doja to close it out. Again, all five players stay alive. And... It's a best of one. It's an elimination match. You almost think, we talked about this yesterday, maybe an early timeout. You've got an advantage that's now dissolved massively, and you're only going to make the job harder when you go over to the terrorist side. Mm -hmm. You finally got money for the buy. No timeout this one, perhaps thinking they can keep this closer. But if this slips away, you might look back and say, why didn't they at this time? Because obviously Envious has caught on, like you say, being a lot more dynamic in their approach. And Gambit's not really changed much to compensate the difference. Moe's going to go on the opposite single this time. It looks like it's going to be another quick default in toward A-Main with Apex and Kenny to hold that position. Same thing again, Apex looking away from the flash. Yeah, not going for any fast boost this time, it's going to be holding up. You can see Apex turns away, waiting for anyone to push. Kenny, yes, gets flash whatsoever. Apex is there to do the 180 and take him down. No aggression whatsoever from the CT. You can see them spread across on the minimap right now, just patrolling each area. We talked about mid being a problem. And they have got Hooch there, joined by Adren. And it's actually going to be Mo towards that quad area once more, seeing if you can get any vision towards A-Main. So the last time they did go for that default and didn't see anyone push A-Main, they immediately tried to take over mid-control afterward by boosting two. This time they are still going to go on to A, but with less information, no smoke out. We'll see if Kenny can take advantage of that with the AWP, because Moe's staring it down in return. He thought about the Molotov. It might have been beneficial in this situation. He'll go with it, shoulder peek. Mo can't hit the shot. They now know there's an op on quad. You would think a smoke would suffice, but they leave it open and Devil goes down. It's up to Doja behind the forklift. Mo is going to drop. It's Apex in the sight, but Doja smoked off. They don't know he's here, and he's going to get a gift. NBK jumps into his crosshair. That's too easily done. And suddenly the numbers fade away for Envious. And you'd think Gambit have a foot in the round bomb not planted either. Kenny finds one, but it's all on him. That was actually quite a sloppy execution there from Envious. It seems that like the timings of the smokes and the actual way the players were coming out at the same time. Mo shouldn't have had any footing in that round whatsoever. He should have been smoked out, flashed off, even Molotov. It seemed like he got gifted a kill and a lot of intel as well. And the smokes actually from the terrorists seem to benefit Dosia as he's hiding behind the forklift there. They ran through and he picks up an easy frag. And the round falls apart there for Envious. So we'll see how they can bounce back from this. It's going to be 6-5 now. Obviously... Still have the AWP on Kenny S after winning five rounds in a row. Their money is absolutely fine. And it will last them a couple more rounds as well. But CTs need to be careful here. Their money still has been affected after having to rebuy into this round. A loss here would potentially mean an eco. Uh, more of the same once again from Envious. Slowing things down, waiting for aggression, trying to work some picks. This time it's going to be Kenny boosted, AWP in hand. Mo still at quad. It's Hooch and Adren, two rifles middle. This gets a little bit scary because Kenny's got the perfect position if Hooch oversteps this even slightly. He's going to get caught off guard. Smoke's going to be That actually benefits Hooch in this sense. They want to try and get forward in this. They want to try and drop over, but it's actually well-timed. They throw out a Molotov immediately after that smoke lands, and it won't allow them to take me quite so easily. They do still have Devil inside the vents. And he's found that first pick once again. The CT's dying without any sort of response there as well. It looks all too easy for Envious to actually take control of this area. And now the CT's have to spread thin. Two players on either bomb site. And it's looking like Envious still have smoke grenades and flashbangs as well to make their way into a full execution. Good news is Mo has the AWP. Needs to hit some of these shots now. And there's no rotation anytime soon. Hooch wants to go for the flank play, but it's too late. It's going to have to be up to the guys inside of the A site. That's Mo, that's Doja. And they've each got a kill, but once more, Apex. He's found a way in behind them. He seems to be getting into the sites relatively easily. Time and time again, Bomb will go down, thankfully, just before Waylander does catch Kenny. But it's now all on him. One versus two. Apex with only three HP is going to play this passive from A main. And it's Waylander that's got Happy Low. He's given himself a real chance in this, but smartly Happy's going to elongate the angle, fade away from this. And it's going to be a game of cat and mouse as they both sit in red HP. Wow. And Happy's going to get away with it. That was a kind of nuts round there. Waylander doing everything he can in that 2 one Did you see how good his awareness was? He's reading that so well. Got them back to very low HP as well. Such a huge round in turn of the CT economy. But I say it again, Gambit really needs to take control of this mid-situation. They're losing that first frag pretty consistently. Dosia and Mo did a 
very admirable attempt at trying to hold that A-bomb site. Found a couple of kills each, but wasn't quite enough in the end. Apex playing pretty lights out as well right now. Finding those entry frags. Three kills for him that round. And he's going to break the economy, as you said before. Gambit now just onto Desert Eagles and some PT-50s. They've got a smoke and two flashbangs as well. Let's see what they can do. I assume Mo and Adren will be flashing to A main. There it is. There's the first flash, but Happy has been boosted up towards middle once again and just getting all the intel in the world. I think he's going to a full beast split by the looks of things now. The one time Waylander thinks, all right, I'll get cheeky and try and just hold an angle up close with a pistol where I haven't been before, they Molotov him out of that checker room. He's down to 18 HP before he even gets back to the platform. And why not? Let's just throw some more flames on top of him. We might as well just roast him all the way into the grave. As the smokes land above as well. Hooch. I try and play headshot with the Deagle. He's already lost Mo in the process. Devil finding that kill. There we go. Apex over top of the edge of the rail. Lander falls immediately after. There's not much they can really do. And not even any economic damage done. Wow. So Envious now in full control of this first half. You can see the money still after losing that. Winning one round, losing the subsequent. It still hasn't really recovered. It's only Dosio who's got decent cash. He's on $5,900. The rest of the team can afford rifles and body armor. But that would be about it. Adren has invested already before the rest of the team, so assuming they're going to join him. And no kits purchased so far. Those here trying to stack up with the utility. He's actually the only player with a single grenade map. That's kind of nuts into a, a gun round here, but they have got kits and one smoke. If Envious has played a default once again, this should be a very simple situation for them. That's the one smoke drop towards the top of the middle. Apex finding that first kill once again, being so strong in these situations. They're now pushing towards Squeaky Door, trying to rectify the situation. Oh, look at Happy. He's read it. He's heard them coming through, and he's going to get both again. That's the second time they've pushed, and the second time Happy gets a double. Adren's compensated for it, and he knows that the only possibility for them to find a way back into yeah. it was to come back through Squeaky. So he did look correctly, but Happy, what a round from him. Gamba had to try something there. Like I said, not a single grenade. Um, they used it towards middle. Dosa gets taken down through the smoke straight away. They tried to react, and then Happy, like he said, just so poised for that situation. And I think I saw three orbs then for Envious this real life. Three orbs in the last round. Why not? Uh, You're going against pistols. There's it? two for sure. No, they had three. I saw it's on, I think it's on the ground. I think it's dropped. You yeah. might, might be right. MBK's going to... There you go. T-side, three-side off. Why not? Cash. Oh, he's taking an AK cash with him. Cash money. So... He's just going to be holding at the start of the round, seeing if they push towards the B storage. But this has turned into a nightmare, a 5-0 situation for Gambit. Thrown away, and this aggression towards middle happening once again. Apex consistently finding that first frag. This time it's Mo to drop. 5-4, and four, and Hooch is trying to push with the smoke, but he gets denied by Devil straight away. Now Gambit need to try and do something with this. They've got pistols and three players alive. And Envious is staying true, staying in a group, and Devil insult to Windry as he tanks down Waylander as well. That's going to be the ninth round here in favor of Envious. So... It's great potential of the first half from Gambit. This dwindles away. Yep. And when you thought, when you saw them win that first gun round, you thought there was a real chance that they would mm. get some momentum rolling and at least pick up the majority of the rounds in this first half. But it's again all on Doja. Pistol to play with. If you watch their YouTube at all before this event, you'd think he's capable of anything. So let's not rule him out, Henry G. That's not. All right, I should have ruled him out. <laughs> So Devil does get the final kill. That says 9-6. Like I said, 5-0 to open this game for Gambit. And only funny one round after that. Very disappointing, I have to say. Once their money situation was lost, Envious just read it perfectly. Just playing the defaults, working the picks, staying as a group. This, that was textbook Envious. They're actually hitting their shots now. And it's not Kenny S that has to carry the situation. MBK, Happy, Apex. People we expect to be big fraggers in this team actually stepping up as well. Apex impressed me tremendously with his um, actual entry kills and his confidence, looking like he's actually hitting shots now. And he was very smart on his entries too. Every time there was smoke deployed, he utilized it very well. The rounds yeah. where we saw Doji and Mo get kills on, to counter the entry in A, mm -hmm. somehow he gets him behind them. Sure. He just times it perfectly to get around. Not only that, we see the lurks from Happy getting through mid. It's one of the first games I've seen in a while. We've been kind of harping, I, me personally, I've been harping on Happy as of late for making decisions to pick up the AWP when you have Kenny on your team to lurk but come out late after there's not really much his, you can his do. His lurks this, actually made sense this game, this right? game, Exactly. He was actually really, he was ahead of the play a lot of times, which so is what the lurk should do. So when he got down middle and got into CT on a number of occasions, I thought it was great. Lurking actually only complements your team if you're actually doing something that's beneficial to the round, right? If you're just holding a certain position on the other side of the map and just getting like a one kill on the rotation doesn't mean anything, that doesn't really do that too much because then obviously your teammates die on the bomb side and you're so far removed from the situation. But what he was doing there, like they're going to the B site, he's waiting in connector, he's actually listening for footsteps and finding kills in the back there. And then especially he's reading the situation so well towards squeaky door as well like when there's actually 
pushing, you can hear CT's pushing into it. He's ready there, hiding, listening out for footsteps as well. It's actually very interesting lurks from him this time. Actually, stuff that was ad advantageous to the team rather than just his scoreboard. Yeah, yeah. and uh, again, first time we've seen that in a while. It's, it's definitely... Uh, impressive. You mentioned that Kenny doesn't have to 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 carry well, this one. He's only got four kills in this half, and it's it's not even that we're we're criticizing him for not hitting shots. He didn't have to open rounds, like you said. Yeah. He didn't have to hit the shots. The, by the time that he came into the fold or the op was there to hold, it was already done. And many times it wasn't like he had to open up against rifles anyway. It was anti ecos that they were just slaughtering them. Well, it's quite an it's quite an interesting scoreline though. The fact that the Croatia is just like him carrying so hard. Even on cash, we saw them like no one else is really stepping up. This is actual. This is the 1v2, actually, where Doji had nearly made this work when the bomb went down, and he got the kit. It's it was falling forward, but there it was. He overstepped it, so he did have to go back, but NBK plays this really well. Such an, oh, actually, that was just fully for this mode. I guess he just knew exactly what the Yeah, we was actually like. saw that from Doji's perspective. Yeah, so we, we assumed it from, from checkers, I think, but he actually got it for this smoke. Why not? Anyway, then, we go into the pistol round. Gambit now onto the terrorist side, of course. Two smoke grenades and a Molotov for them. It's looking like they'll be holding things up here towards middle and B storage as well. Potential B split here as Mo does show himself out. No presence from the CTs whatsoever towards middle. And there's actually three of them towards B. So this could get interesting very quickly. Dosia picks up the first goal onto Devil. But it's going to be Kenny S wrecked by Mo in the drive-by with that burst fire of the Glock. And it's going to be a fully open B side here. Two players remaining for MVS. Apex gets Dosia back. Those starts. The climb back into this. It'll be the second pistol for Gambit if they can close this out. One on four, it looks extremely likely. But sometimes when you get both pistols and the scoreline is as such, it kind of paints a more of a picture in terms of how the game's actually gone. Mo decides to do some damage to Waylander. Why not? He got three kills in the last pistol. We might as well take him out of this one. Very fast round from Gambit there. Straight up B split. It was interesting to see that Envious didn't play a single player towards middle there whatsoever. It's actually left it fully open. And the B split came in. They lost that initial frag. It was too much for them. There's over driven there towards that B site. And they're going to have to... Go into a full save here. Not going to be. Oh, I say that. I'm looking at the four spiders coming out. So that's classic envious. Most teams will do this on the second round, try and do what they can with the CZs, PG 50s. And I'm assuming Kenny S will be keeping himself relatively modest here. He's got $1,000 still, so obviously he's your pup and uh, doesn't want to invest too much in this one to make sure he actually has that orb going into the first gun round here. So four rifles from Gambit. Adren will be the, the recon player. And they're going to a faster play here, straight towards mid, main store or highway. Overtaking this area. And actually, look at this beast uh, beast that coming in from Envious as well. Four players towards the bomb site, all hiding behind the boxes. Why not? Gamble and pay off. If it doesn't work out, you can just become an Uber driver. I, I heard that story this morning that someone became an Uber driver to uh, fuel their or quell their gambling addiction. Do you have a gambling addiction? No, I don't, but it was a good drive to the arena. Let me just tell okay. you that. Fair enough. Hearing someone's tragic life story. Yeah, well, apparently it's worked out. Oh, he enjoys Uber. So, Doja going to try and shoot them down. This does give information there's at least one, but the others haven't peaked. And this is where things can get a little bit awkward for Waylander in specific, who gets caught in the open tag down early. And they're actually getting good exchanges right now. Envious. Not only that, they're pincered in because the second player's gone back out to mid. They're going to drop the bomb. Happy's the last alive, but he's certainly done enough to give himself a chance. One versus two. Ample time. Moe's going to find him. The B, B stack actually paying dividends there for Envious. Don't win the round, but they do take down three kills. And uh, this is the throw array round at this point. Gambit will just be able to buy it with the AKs. Take things a little bit slower, see if there is another stack coming in or maybe a rush from the CTs. But it's going to draw things up a 9-9 here. So definitely got a game on our hands. We'll see what Envious can bring to the table this round. Kenny S is going to have to CZ. Some PT-50s out as well, but this should be a, a foregone conclusion, I would say, Matt. There's not really much Envious can do here. But they're going to be stacking A this time. They're going to be potentially pushing this. They have got a flashbang on Kenny, so... Maybe just going into that A storage area, try and find the first frag, and there will be a Dren there as well. They're going to wait until they hear a footstep, presumably, and then try and take him down, but he's so far removed from that area, he'll just be able to see the flash and fall back. Robin should have fallen back when he saw the flash, but Doja going to open up Squeaky Door. This leaves NBK slightly forward. They're going to commit to this. They're going to push into A main. It's a Dren who's going to catch them. And they'll go no further with the pistols. Once more, a gamble play, but it's not going to work out. It's going to give the bomb site entirely to Gambit. So once more, they also win the ensuing rounds after the pistol. Yeah, it's going to be the happy remaining now with that PT-50. They did what they could there. Like they listening out for footsteps and went for the flashbang towards A main, but Terrorist just ready. Outgunned them there. Hooch is going down to 2 HP. That's about all the damage to report here. Happy will remain, and he'll just be hanging out towards the mid warehouse here. So, like you said, Gambit do keep all players alive and decent cash as well. We'll see what money will be coming in for Kenny S. He definitely can afford the AWP. It will be a very tight buy, I'd imagine. He has been buying CZs and smoke grenades as well and a flashbang. So, 
Let's see where his money lies after this one. Just wants to do any exit do think, economy damage he can. Do you think Adren will keep his Mac 10 and go for the Jaden round? The Jaden round. I love it. I've got you on board finally. Yeah. Um, well, according to James Bardoff, the MAC-10 is viable in every round, but he's yet to frag, so I don't know if it's advised. <laughs> well, we'll see what he decides to do. He will be dropping the MAC-10 this time, so we're not going to see any Jaden antics at this time, <laughs> though we can see the money for Envy. It's actually not as strong as we thought. Kenny S won't have that AWP. Currently set on 5 for 12, not getting his weapon of choice into this first gun round. It'll be interesting to see what Envious bring to the table. Not a single kit purchased either, so... You'd expect to see something a little bit more aggressive here mid-round and see whether they can find that first pick and slow down any potential execution coming in from Gambit here. They've got a full utility base here. Molotov smokes everything. They'll be setting themselves up for more of a default play here. Waiting to see if they can read the CTs in any sort of sense. Be going to hold the tighter angle inside of the A site. No one up toward quad this time. No NBK and NBK. You hate to say it. That was just already toward the doorway. Saying it, though, apparently he is going to head toward that position. At least to the slide. They're going to go for the boost late. Happy's going to look toward A main. If the door opens, they'll hear it, they'll drop, they'll shuffle. But the focus will be shutting down the initial entry. No commitment so far on the opposing side. Gambit just holding the bomb back out. Adren's going to work toward A main, A main now. It's a single flash to go in. They've got Smoke still and Molotovs. And I think they're hoping at this point that they can get rid of those... Utilities, the last remaining utility on the envious side. Well, the thing is, so far, that boost they've got going on of Happy above the bomb site, they don't really need to use the remaining smokes they have. They've got good, good vision, and it's a very unlikely place to die from as well. Here comes the first. It looks like a bait smoke, I would say, from Gambit. Adren just trying to see what he can get out of them. Be be just go. Yet. They do yeah. go for Molotovs onto Forklift. They're trying to flush them out, but the first shot in from Happy. With that smoke there, Doja can't push through that blindly. He can't figure out exactly where they are. It's a good pinch play from Waylander, though. Doja times it so that they get Highway. It's a one-two punch onto the A site, and suddenly Apex has to turn back because they've got Highway Control as well as Z Connector. There's no entrance back in toward the territory that's been lost, and Doja, excellent shot from on top of the red crate, finds Apex at the truck. That forces Devil back into hiding. And he and Kenny come up with a plan to try and salvage the weapons they can. Yeah, very interesting round there from Gambit. Like I said, those initial smokes to kind of bait out any sort of utility from the CTs. The boost does work out initially for Happy, but that's pretty much all they get out of it. Devil does find another. Well, he's trying to save his weapon, but that split coming in from middle as well just completely took apart the CTs there. Didn't really know what was coming towards him. Didn't have any mid-presence whatsoever. It's going to be Waylander to pick up his third frag. On towards Devil, just Kenny S remaining now. And that's four rounds in a row in the second half in favor of Gambit. Very similar scenes to what we saw in the first. Kenny S on 8 HP shouldn't survive here, I would say. He's going to be spotted now, and there's the final kill from Waylander. Gets his fourth of the round, but Envious' money must be very low now. You know, about 3,200 average across the team, so... Wow, this is actually looking kind of interesting. Kenny S yet to buy an AWP on the CT side. They're not really finding any frags in the first gun round. Didn't have many grenades as well. And looking like they're going for that partial buy this time. He's going to have a strong loss bonus into the next. So they can justify some upgraded pistols and body armor. And you can see Apex with their HE as well trying to bring so the party. not only do they win two pistols, Gambit, they win yeah. the two first gun rounds yep. in each half. Mm -hmm. This Indeed. becomes a must win when you look at those stats almost. I mean... Any other game, any other teams, any other matchup, you'd say it's a foregone conclusion. But right now, Envious have done enough with that first half turnaround to keep themselves in it. NBK is going to get toward lockers early and undetected. Adren knows he's late to that position, so he considers it, but will they do much about it? They try and spam through, and NBK gets a little bit impatient because of this and goes for the shot. That gives away the position, and Adren finds him. Now they'll push through, though, two immediately back into that position. They try and compensate for it, and they get one. It's a Kenny S on demo from a distance, but Adren does at least tra trade back in their favor, and Hooch is there. He's rotated back over from mid. Well, then Apex and Happy remain. They have got 5.7s and P250s, but uh, not really much to work with, I'd say. Two players coming with the bomb towards A main, and I see enough. Apex is actually in a decent position to take someone down here. There's no one towards Squeaky as of yet. As I say that, though, Dosia is slowly making his way through that area. Apex could be interesting here as he does take him down and pick up an AK as well. Works out well because he's got control of long. He could play from that door, control his peak. But they're going to try and rotate off of this because Waylander finds the kill at the bottom of highway. That's happy, opens up the B side and Apex. He's going to be as quick as he can about rotating over, but tagged up. Yeah. As Waylander holds the position once more, 15 HP, and that's enough to discourage it. Yeah, they've his position now. 
And the fact he has body armor already and the AK, it's not even worth him trying to do anything with this. The money should be swelling right now for the T's. After this, they probably have about like six or seven K each. So no problem whatsoever. And for them, he might as well try and stay alive. As he hides behind the truck right now, 15 HP. I'm not really sure why he's not going towards the squeaky door. He's now actually lost all opportunity to do that. He's getting pinned in by Hooch. And there it is. He'll pick up the final kill. 11 plays nine now. Envious should have cash going into this one. Plenty of it. Could bring some different ideas to the table. Kenny S does get the AWP now. And they, once again, do not have a single kit. Happy he can buy one at the moment. And their devil picks one up. So we'll see what they can do now. Kenny S with the AWP. You'd imagine this is the turnaround. This is a map tradition. It's very strong for Kenny. So he should be stepping up now. I'd say he hasn't really got so much confidence right now. He hasn't really been setting the world on fire with the AWP. We'll see whether he can be a little bit more dynamic now and find those first picks. Straight set, bounce smoke, Waylander into B. Doji is there as well, so a bit of pressure applied from Gambit. Hooch is going to hold middle. Needs to be careful, though, because it's a double push as well as a boost from Happy. And I don't know if Hooch has full control, but Waylander, meanwhile, is doing massive damage inside of the B site. So even though they get toward that mid position, it might be too late because Waylander's got now a third kill. I'm not sure that was Waylander doing something good, Matt, or Envious just having a horrible decision to go back into. They got smoked and flashed out. Devil just ran through and left Kenny for dead there. Kenny had no choice but to just come and commit. And that's Waylander picking up his fourth frag. Once those first two kills were found, the rest of them are arbitrary at that point because it, the round was over. The B site was open, plan down to five players. You could see what Envious wanted to do there, that fast push in the B storage. But once that smoke came in, it was Devil that's overcommitted at that stage, and he's stopped behind a smoke. Kenny S has just got no exit strategy here. Running backwards, and Waylander gets two pretty simple frags, I have to say. And 12 plays 9 now, and we have got a... Is this a force spike coming from Envious? No, it's more the partial once again. MBK just picking up the scout. A map. He made this weapon famous on, I would say, towards the court area. Absolutely. We'll see what he can do with this one. Desperately need this one if they're going to gain something out of this, but it's going to be pistols and the scouts and some body armor once again. And Waylander just doing some serious Jesus. work once again. Double headshots, taking down Devil and Kenny S. A five on three, and Apex taking quite a lot of damage as well. So Waylander coming to life here on the second half. He's got 24 kills. I think kills. it's the, ni the words of uh, Duncan Shields that okay. he's got land in his name, so the land is in his game. But it's Hooch that and Mo that are going to come out with more. Hey, I didn't say it. He did. Not my words. Okay. NBK, though, the last alive. This scout, you said he made it famous in this position. None more famous than if he could pick up a 1v5 here. But... Put this in context for you. It's now three rounds to go for Gambit Gaming to knock out Envious. The world, the current champions in the major. Yes, in group okay. stages, the bottom of the group stage. How far has this slump really gone? This is when you want to see characters show up, or have they truly given up on themselves? Is this an implosion? I, oh, this is just so much context that <laughs> like you can't really tell the story better than that. These are the current major champions potentially about to go out to Gambit Gaming. Score is now 13 tonight. Kenny has got the orb once again. He tried for that aggression towards B. Like I said, hasn't really found anything with it so far. Going to be playing more of a passive hold this time. Two players going towards A main here. It's going to be MBK monotoping towards the entrance of the storage area and we're facing as well. They've got control of it, but the Terrors are playing such a passive game. It's going to amount to nothing almost once uh, utility has been depleted. Going to be smoking it off as well. And it's great for now, sure, but now they have to fall back to the bomb site, and then they're left without the smoke grenades or incendiaries. So check out middle, see what's going on. Pops out the vent to make sure no one's hiding behind. Smoke off to give them a little bit more entry. It's not the full wall of smokes. That's Hooch, though. Take a step further. He actually, Molotovs towards Z that time. It didn't go for the sandbags, but the smoke already on it means that it's immediately extinguished. So a bit of a misplay in terms of timing on that Molotov. We still have MBK who was patrolling towards that A storage area. His smoke is about to dissipate now. So although he's still spotting it, his uh, situational advantage has been taken away. Waylander, is he towards the vents? Okay. I already got there. I actually think that Molotov might have been intended to go, and he missed the pillar, so it bounced into Z because they had Hooch waiting in the cubby immediately after. But either way, he's got the vents. They'll have heard this. Devil is still in the sight despite Kenny going down early. It's Waylander again, though. Another two kills for him. And this gets bad to worse oh as the French sides start to crumble. It's Apex and NBK that are going to be the last alive. But my God, if you've got a God, pray to it now. Hold these weapons and do what you can in the next because this one's gone as well. Kenny S has got absolutely wrecked on the side there. Did you see the shot Waylander got on him? That was incredibly good. He got control of the vents. He mullets off the side, takes him out of position, and just blows the head off Kenny S there. Once again, he gets taken down without a single frag. Seven for 17. And that's going to be the 14th round for Gamba without dropping a single frag. 
to add to the They've pain. They've got five digits of money on three players right now. Make it four over, after the round. Waylander is absolutely carrying this right now. 26 kills for him. The next highest in the server is Apex. And to be fair, on a map that he is very good on normally, but still only at 19, just goes to show you, this is an incredible performance. There you go. That's the shot you were talking about. That's just insane. Kenny is just having the worst time on that B-bomb site. Went aggressive, got wrecked, went defensive, got even harder wrecked, and then he's going to be going into the 24th round, looking down the barrel of map and match point to Gamma Gaming. The money's not great. They've got $3,400. That's maximum loss bonus. Where's the timeout? We talk about this well, obvious all the I time. Think, I, I mean, assume this is it right now, right? Yeah. Absolutely. But where was it? I mean, when, you, when you're starting to lose the economy earlier, I said to Cam, but in the first half, I called them out. I didn't think that, you know, they would give themselves a chance if they didn't lose or take advantage of the momentum that if they lost that momentum. Mark my words, they've come back in great style. And again, I mean, Waylander's just entrances on that B site is sick. He's so good. He's so aware at listening to his teammates in communication as well. We saw the first time when he goes in through A, or rather, excuse me, in through main into B and turns back toward the vent, catches the player falling out of it, which wasn't even his responsibility. Yeah. That time goes in, gets one pick, waits, holds the angle, and relays information that there's one more on the site, gets that kill. Like He's playing really good Counter-Strike right how now. How is he getting into the vents area like that, though? Just like under that, well, that was off the smokes off mid. They'd already cleared it. But it seems like they've just gone, they're oblivious to it. Though. Like Kenny with the AWP, though, right? Surely he's got to be looking towards the checkers area. Surely he's got to be doing something. I guess he was headshot maybe. He was he's on the bomb site. He's to on the bomb site. So what? I think he got caught in transition because he actually was down by the generator. Yeah. And when he heard the vents pop, I think he thought, all right, I need to be in a better position to cover off the second Still, entry point, but it's, got it's, nailed. It's looking too easy for them right now. So Wayland has got all this for checkers. One Molotov to the site. Kenny has to face. He leaves his teammate in a horrible situation. He has to face as well. And to be fair to Wayland, that's actually really sick stuff from him. So yep. that's such an important round as well. Not dropping a single frag. We can see Wayland is on 16k pretty much. He's on just below 15. And uh, Envious will be forcing into this round. Three Famuses, two pistols, and one round will put Gambit onto match points and be knocked one step closer to knocking out Envious here. That's kind of insane. And... If there's ever a force to define Envious, it's always make or break with them. This is literally make or break for the entire roster in this situation. You break right now with this force buy where you get criticized heavily for doing it in the past, and it's going to be one of the most bitter pills to swallow. If you pull this off, you give yourself a lifeline, a desperate one at that, because as you can see, the money is out of control on the Gambit side right now. There we go then. Round number 24, Gambit with a massive advantage in terms of the weaponry and utility as well. Waylander will be facing straight in towards that B storage area. Actually getting pretty aggressive here as well through the smoke. Doesn't land any damage just yet. We'll see how the CTs approach the situation. Gillis will be playing a very standard formation at the moment. Kenny S, obviously with no orb, just a Famous and body armor and one flashbang. This is such a desperate round for the CTs, holding back and just hoping they're not going to get punished for this. They've got one smoke remaining and an incendiary. Gambit is making them sweat right now, just slowing things down, seeing what options are available to them. Apex again going to play this rotation position in middle, which he's arguably extremely effective at, if not the most effective at, with a rifle. Now he's gone back over toward A. It's NBK and Heath are going to flash in, so once more Envious want information. They want to get in. They've realized now that no one is there, and NBK is going to burrow into the lockers, but where's the rest of the information going to be garnered? And at least is a rotation to cover for this. Now they're going to push on to B. It's Devil to go first, but look out toward Toxic. They need to spot this right now. And Waylander, once more, is going to be in the right position at the right time. It's two more kills for him as he gets much closer to that 30 total against Envious in an elimination match. Apex goes back deep within the depths of the A site. Doji is going to have heard that. He'll have information that there's one away, and it's going to be two kills to go before they find map point. Well, there it is. Gambit, the new roster. Crazy scenes there, and it's Dose going to be picking up that kill on ZMBK as well. Apex, I'm afraid there's no chance of you winning this round, and that's his Gambit just bleeding them out, making them sweat, making them question their setup. So they had to go for the pushes in the end. They needed something to work with there, and there it is 15 plays, nine now. They're one round away from being knocked out of this major. Unbelievable scenes. Gambit only dropping one frag once again, and here it is. Then the money still 3,400. Can only pretty much get a similar buy coming in. Famuses, MBK could potentially get a scout if he wanted to, but what, look at the patience of Waylander. They don't even consider this position. Two easy frags for him once again. He's currently sat on 28 kills. So a lot of them have been gifted to him. You have to say, like, a lot of those situations where sort of envious are just running into him and, and trying to make things happen. But to get those gifts, you've got to be in the right place. Sure. And that's as much luck as skill in some sense. Happy's going to get aggressive, try and get up toward middle, make something of this, and it's another desperate push, another one to catch them off guard because it's all they can try and do at this point. 
And in fairness, this time, if Happy drops, he's actually got a chance at this because Doji has gone towards Squeaky, and Hooch has left middle wide open. MBK's going to push through the smoke. Happy's going to drop down momentarily. Surely he's going to consider this when MBK doesn't get much in the way of information now. Not only that, we've got everyone pushed up. Apex has gone all the way into C, or rather, excuse me, into T-spawn. Adren and Doji get toward the A site. You'd think that would be the call, that it's clear, but suddenly, somehow, map control is entirely gifted to the way of a Envious this time. Apex's position is extremely good because the bomb's gone down. Happy hasn't needed to drop. He can stay up there. That is a perfect flash as well, and he gets Adren. A round out of nowhere. It's not done yet. Doji has got the rifle. Devil's picked up an AK to go with it, but Apex is going to close it out all through an early push on the B tunnels. So somehow that all in gamble, not playing a single player towards the A site. Pushing B storage, boosting up on middle as well. I can still the shouting from Envious. They're still believing right now. Five rounds in a row required. Money's still not amazing, but they do manage to get an AWP here. To be fair, I think that was Maniac shouting, so perhaps trying to get them back into it. <sighs> so this guy, so far since he's joined the team, it hasn't been a pretty affair for him. To be fair, since he's come on as coach, I think they've That's, gone out of groups yeah. pretty much every single event he's been at. He That's, needs I'm this. Not, I don't think it's his fault entirely <laughs> oh, no, of course either. Not. I'm just saying in terms of his reputation, as soon as he joined, it's been a bit of a nightmare. But anyway, let me get the round number 26. So a change of position inside the B site this time for Envious. Both players favoring the construction, or the, excuse me, construction, the checker side of the site, no one on the platform. And that's because Kenny wants to get another unorthodox play with his AWP. They're relying on catching Gambit off guard. Last round it worked. But is it a gimmick or is it truly something they can hold to fruition in their favor for the majority in the rest of this map because they can't afford one slip up? And they've had trouble getting the first kills a number of times on the CT side. We'll see if they can find it here again. Not a lot of information gathered, and patience is virtue right now for Gambit. Doji is out toward that doorway. He'll have heard Apex and MBK go toward that A main position as well. We have got the boost coming in from Devil towards middle right now. So MBK finds the first one. Devil now coming to life, finds the kill on towards who? Can he get more? Actually, Apex saving him as well, coming in for the crossfire. He finds two headshots, and now Envious with the 11th round on the board. Doji trying to do what he can, but he will be punished by Apex in the end. And this Sick is timing on that boost, because the oh, Molotov great. just extinguished. They would have thought, all right, that's cleared. There's no way. And then because they have that double play over at construction, keep on the whole construction. They have you no idea why. Like. But checkers, and they boost him right back up. That, that's very well done. What timed. I liked about that was even more. As soon as, as soon as Devil got all the attention, Apex is facing straight away. Look, no one's looking at him whatsoever. Double spray down. Pretty simple affair, but just the teamwork and that synergy is very impressive. And they're going to need a lot more of that map. They're going to get four rounds in a row here. Money's still strong for Gambit. And we'll see if Envious can hold on. They're very in tune to what Gambit are doing right now, pushing at all the right times, getting key information, boosting into the events and just finding Gambit out of position, but it's going to take a lot more to hold on for this long, but so far so good in the last two. Kenny S back on the orb. He's going to be towards the B storage area once again, Devil with him. And this is more of a default play coming from Gambit right now. They haven't actually done too much in terms of set executions. It's all to be more working the picks, getting the splits going, and Waylander doing some fantastic work with his positional control. Kenny and Devil looking for the same approach this time. They've chiseled into that economy slightly. They've halved it, but they're still around in hand at least for Gambit, if not two. In this situation, MBK, that's why we call it that spot. He's got Happy to play off of, and as you can see it in the distance, Apex. Here he comes. Yeah, climbing back up highway. And it is going to be the boost toward middle. Devil's going to do the same thing again. There's no Molotov timing it. In turn, he's going to drop it so they can't push him, so he can focus elsewhere, but Adren's there. It's Apex to pop back out. Same bait and switch, but this time not quite as effective. Thankfully for Envious' side, they won't push through the vents immediately after it, but they will flash off Apex. Mid's down. It's all on Kenny inside the B site. Happy's found one, as has Kenny. And a late smoke's going to delay them. Hooch is going to take the fight, though. He wants in early because he knows the rotation's coming. He knows it's going to be a threat. Happy's going to spot the foot going by the smoke, and he pops out. It's all down and done. Staying alive here just about. They're losing those initial frags, but Apex did just enough there to distract and slow them down as they went towards that B split. Kenny found one. It looked like he was struggling a little bit onto the side there and happy with some audacious play through the smoke there. Does back him up and seal the deal as they get their 12th round on the board. It's a terrorist timeout now. So Gambit taking time just to work out how they're going to approach the situation. Obviously now that's what, three rounds in a row for Envious after hitting match point for Gambit. One of the things we discussed at the end of the first half as well was Kenny's 
Contribution, he only had four kills. We said it wasn't an issue because they were still finding the rounds. Now it's starting to be a problem. Yes, he gets one in that round. It was a crucial one. It slowed down their entry, but he's still only at eight kills. And a number of times he's been overwhelmed. But like you said, Waylander walking out. You'd think he's watching the events, gets caught there. Goes into the A side. He's playing at quad that round. No smokes come out. You think he has a clean line of sight. Yeah. In they go again. I think it was Hooch that came out from the door that time and got him. Like He's definitely had issues connecting on these fast, high-pressure shots. Well, they seem a little bit more revitalized now. They're actually taking control of the A store like, like aggressively almost every single time. It seemed like they kind of said, well, we've got nothing to lose now. We might as well keep trying, keep this aggression. It's working. We're finding the first picks here, and actually this synergy between the vents and the mid-area is working pretty well as well. They're timing it quite nicely. Devil and Apex coordinating between each other and actually finding the kills there and getting a lot of information just as the B split comes in as well. So that's great for their teammates. Happy with some big plays through the smoke there. That's actually quite impressive for him and actually saving the life of his teammates as well. So they've got three rounds to go. The money's still very strong for Gambit. I think it look right now, they're going to be in a full buy with no AWP this time. They went for the kind of fake execution now. I think that they're overthinking this situation a little bit too much. They're trying to just do everything they can to outsmart Envious right now. I feel like just a simple execution with the smokes, something that doesn't have to be all over the top. They can just do two smokes towards highway, one towards quad, try and stay as a unit and just work the frags that way. They're trying to overplay every sort of situation right now, in my opinion. We'll see what they bring to the table once this pause comes in. I think we are getting back into the game right now. Ten seconds remain. Kenny is still on the AWP. Like I said, eight frags. It's been one of the poorest showings yeah. we've, seen, we've seen from him. This whole, not only this whole tournament, the last like two or three events, he's had a great 2016 just in terms of individual performance. It's been the rest of his team that have been lackluster. So, it's, I mean, that's that's one. one of the weird stories, right? I mean, Kenny comes over originally not playing well. They lose in the finals of their first major with this. Well, not even this roster. Now the Devils here, but the yeah. you know the, the first roster shuffle when they brought in Kenny and Apex, Cologne obviously, and and. He was very hard on himself for not having a good performance. He plays better at clues. They win that. And ever since then, it's been he and Apex, the new guys, that have actually been doing the bulk of the heavy lifting for this team. The rest of them seem to be in tatters. And oftentimes, you wonder if their personalities clash. But we'll tell. three rounds is the goal. The only goal. The mandatory task in front of Envious right now is Wayland, who's going to fall away from that B tunnels early, given that the Molotov was dropped down and deployed from the CT side quite quickly, as well as a smoke on the initial entry. And it's more passive this time. Devil and Kenny gonna go back toward that platform. Meanwhile, on A side, they've already distracted and pulled Apex up toward the top of highway, which means Waylander, who's poised and ready inside mid right now, could lurk out and try and take some highway control if they're not careful of this. That's it. The execution actually coming in right now. MBK have a lovely shot to Adren by himself as well. The way the rest of his teammates, he gets taken down five on four. No one's committing, what is this? That's lackluster performance because he's on his own. They do get one trade onto Apex, but he found Mo unsuspectingly in the corner. There's the play from Waylander. They left the mid open. He does come up the highway, but look at NBK with two quick kills, both on the entry from his left side, and now he knows exactly where Waylander's playing from. And now the economy becomes a factor because they have chiseled it away from Gambit. They should be able to control the situation in the next, but it's going to be an aid from Kenny. Flank was there from Devil, if not. We've always talked about the communication being an issue for Team Gambit. Obviously, they've got a m massive array of different nationalities there. And it's, you know, why is Adren jumping out A main by himself? I, I was trying to work out what the, the hell that was. It's not like they're setting up for a fake. They haven't got people on the other side of the map. They just had Waylando who's doing the lurk play. But uh, it was very, very strange play. MBK have a lovely shot here from his coin position. And uh, the bomb goes down. That looked a little bit too easy. They kind of went for the right idea, like I said. Go for a simple A execution to stay together. Make sure you're trading frags. That's, if they had actually done that, I think that round would have worked out for them. Running out one by one and then not being assertive is not the way to do it. Kenny is about to be tested now. AK rush straight oh, towards what? B. Why not? He gets taken down to 6 HP but does survive. That was a day shift. And what is that from Kenny S? He gets Waylander on the way through. They had no idea he would be at the small pit. He was a sitting duck afterwards, but at least something for him to cheer about. Apex, this is good timing. He's come back through the vents early, but does, does he know? I'm not sure he's aware that Hooch had already pushed through. Happy finds him immediately after. But if Apex could have stayed alive in that position, it could have been an absolute thorn in the side of Gambit, who now finally have control of the B site. And with a bomb going down, it's going to be 3v3 on the retake. And Envious, this is massive pressure. This is their biggest task yet. Kits on all three. Devil's made his way through the vents already. He's going to try and get as much information as possible. Happy's going to go ahead and Molotov off the box behind him so he doesn't have to worry about any chance of anyone sitting and trying to use timing. That allows him to go in. And Devil, he's going to try and raise hell, but Adren's not going to allow it. As he goes ahead and gets immediately back into him, leave it to Happy to find the refrag, but it's Adren to close it out. And Envious are done. Gambit lives on. Unbelievable. That's it. Envious have been knocked out of the major. The current champions going home in the group stages to Gambit Gaming. No disrespect to them, it's just not a 
result you expect to hear here. And somehow it's the B rush in the end. Is all it takes to actually take the win here against Envis. You can see the look on their face. What does this mean for the future of this team, Matt? And a little bit of emotion shown. It looked like they thought they could do it, that they got the momentum going. And this is not at all what they would have expected, what no one would have expected. They lost to CLG yesterday, and today it's Gambit. Teams, you would expect these guys to be heads and shoulders above, but... I mean, you have to put a scope on this team now. What happens? What happens next? We know the French have done many roster shuffles in the past. You go to very games, you have the Titan deal, then you go to the LDLC teams. They all get shuffled around. They've already done a shuffle within those two teams. Where else do they go? Where else can they go, and what is going to happen? I mean, this is, this is big. I wish I knew. Like, this is a massive problem for them right now. It's not like it's a one-off event. The last three, well, two or three events have been absolutely shocking. The whole of 2016 has been completely lackluster. Not just in the sense of a bad, it's dire. Like they're going out in group stages consistently now and losing to NRG mixes. They're losing to Gambit. They're losing to CLG. The teams, we expect them to actually run over. This is the thing. I mean, we were, we were talking about Virtus Pro slump at yeah. the start of this year. I think this is way worse. When you put, the uh, yeah. put this into perspective, this just happened at a major. They just went last place in a major. On the flip side of that, we do have to give credit to Gambit. Of course. We absolutely amazing. do. Waylander was sick. That's one of the best games I've seen in this tournament so far from yep. an individual player. I mean, in the qualifier, even we weren't giving them a chance at times, but their, their timings aren't terrible. They've got good flashes through. Like you said, they did lack some execution there still. And sure, sure the slump from Envious kind of gave them a chance in this, but credit where credit's due. They now live on in this group. They were a new roster put together after Cluj. They're the newest roster in this tournament. And that's, I mean, this is big for them. This, this, when you look at who else is in this group, CLG, you have to think there's a chance for them in that. So of course. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure everybody else is. This just got very, very interesting because not only that, another French team's on the chopping block. But first, let's hear from Gambit. Let's hear from Hooch. He's standing by with Red Eye. Thank you very much, Hooch. Congratulations on an amazing victory. Uh, when you had to play Envy, when you looked at the draw, they're the defending champions. They're not in the best of shape, but it must have been a, a tough game for you to look at. So how did you approach it? Well, uh, we have a really nice group, really tough teams. Uh, Australia is, re is really a good team. Envy was uh, last winner and CLG also a very good team. But uh, we knew we, we could make it, uh, even at least win one match. But when Envy lost to uh, CLG with a really bad uh, city side, after even we lost 6-9 as CT, after a 5-0 lead like almost like against Australia, uh, I was feeling confident that we can make it. And uh, we took 15 rounds, but then we choked and couldn't uh, do uh, one normal round. But thanks to Adrian, he saved our life. And also credits to Waylander, who was really disappointed with the match yesterday, but he just wrecked them. Yeah, he definitely stepped up today. Yeah. So looking forward in into the group, it is a, it's a really bad group for you, or it was a bad group with such great teams in it. But potentially now you, you get a match against one of the other two in the t in the group. Could be yeah. CLG, more likely CLG, more I would like, suggest. More likely CLG, but uh, they're in really, really good shape and anything can happen. But this is major. There is no easy groups. All the best teams are here and you can be happy or unhappy with your group. I mean, D group is really hard, but our group is really hard too. So it's major. Many fans would have, would have looked at the group and would have said, uh, Gambit, well, yeah, probably going to go out in fourth in this group. You haven't done that now. You've got a shot at making the quarterfinals. Realistically, how far can Gambit make it? Uh, I don't make predictions about my team, but uh, at qualifier, everyone was saying that we're going to go out first in group, and uh, we proved them wrong. Now I hope we will do the same, just as. Got any, got any messages for Thorin, maybe? Does Thorin, yeah. does Thorin rate you? Uh, Thorin? I know Thorin for a long time. He's a good guy. Sometimes he's just too, too much, but <laughs> it's okay. That's why people love him. So just, hi, Thorin. All right. Well, there you go. Hi, Thorin. Uh, let's go over to the desk with Sir Scoots and find out whether Thorin rates the gambit rate. Thank you very much, Red Eye. We will get with Thorin, but again, just a, just a note. Uh, one thing that we kind of did behind the scenes, kind of looking at some stats. This is the first time I'm pretty sure that a defending major champion has gone out 0-2 the next major. Or just even in groups. Or yeah. even in groups? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it goes that far. Yeah, so that's so, yeah. that's yeah. even worse. Uh, again, we, we've talked about their slump, that they're not looking good at all. Uh, you called it. Uh, but again, uh, another stat, uh, four CT rounds for Envious over two maps, all in this map. Yep. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm sorry to say this to French fans uh, or to fans of Envy, but that's very, 
reminiscent of North American teams and their struggles. And that, that just kind of is something that's very indicative of the state this team is in in terms of not playing as a team. It's much easier on that T side to group up, to go for trades, to have some easy entrance into the bomb sites. Uh, it, it is what we see out of North American teams all the time. They don't have that teamwork. That communication is not there to kind of coordinate your defensive setups, your rotations, pop flashes, nades to slow things down. Um, and this is a very brittle Envy team. When they went down 5-0, you could almost feel like they were going to break. Now, they did manage to cling on and make that comeback in the first half, but in the second half, they just they just kind of caught on a little bit too late in that. They got involved in the match far too late. Duncan. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's particularly noticeable to me because... The main things you think of in terms of what a CT side is about is about communication, so that you're giving the information based on what you're seeing, and then obviously about skill. Like, you have to be able to hold your positions, you have to be able to get kills on the people. And so, on paper, this should be one of the most skilled teams in the whole world. Even now, okay, Devil's had a lot of problems since he came in the team. Some of the other guys here are still players who, they have matches where you're like, this guy could still be one of the best in the world, but then you look at what they're able to put out overall, and they're just not putting up good CT halves. They're not getting those kills, and so actually skill is suddenly a factor for Envious. They're not having star performances, and aside from Kenny S with the odd performance, ironically in this game, very, very poor actually, mm. but aside from some Kenny S maps over the last couple of months, there hasn't been a whole lot in this team. Like They've totally struggled. Before they had this, what was great about the Envious era when they won the major was you looked at it, and they had almost every role set. Like they had the amazing entry frag at Apex. They had Kenny S was like a good AWPer. Didn't have to be the star to carry the team anymore. NBK was a fantastic support player. Happy the lurker and in-game leader. Kiyoshima was admittedly struggling a little bit. But you saw the whole team. It was like it was a very complete team. And you were like, this is a team that should be a top elite level team for a long time. You look now, which player, aside from Kenny S as the AWPer, and like I say, in this game, very poor. Who's even good at their role? I don't, I don't think there's anyone that someone would even nominate for like top three at that position. That's how, how far they've fallen. On the other side of the equation... Like, it's not like Gambit completely rinsed them out. Obviously, the comeback there at the end showed that Gambit didn't have all the pieces themselves when they switched over the other side, but this was all powered by the Waylander performance. And interestingly enough, Waylander was someone who first came onto people's radars in terms of the proper lands at the uh, Katowice 2015 offline qualifier. He went with a team called Peter, and he actually had Hooch as a stand in there. And even though he's Finnish and he, with all these Russian guys, they were the team actually that took Kenny S's Titan team to an overtime game. That yep. was actually on cash as well, interestingly enough. I think that was the game that Kenny had like 50 frags in as that as well. So that was when people first saw him. But at the time, everyone was like, oh, he's just an online player. Like that, you know, he had one like, offline game, and obviously that team didn't qualify. I think they went out in last place, actually. So it's been a long trek for him. And he's the guy who actually, out of all the names in the CIS, you wouldn't have expected him to get back in the mix. But he's had a monster map at exactly the right time and against a team who's struggling skill-wise. So yeah. he's got to look fantastic in this game, even though we don't know how that'll continue on. And as you start talking, I definitely want your thoughts on it. Yeah. We're going to ro start rolling our highlight clips and a lot of our highlights of the guy you just mentioned, I was going to say, I'm actually yeah. told Waylander. talk about him a lot. So roll yeah. those clips and you can go and talk about Well, him. yeah, sure. So um, just uh, picking up on the Waylander point, you know, uh, we saw him obviously at the last chance uh, qu qualifier for the major. And uh, he, he was playing SK Gaming and Renegades okay. there. On, on, on train, and he looked very, very good. Now, statistically, as Duncan says, online, everyone was like, is this guy going to show up at a LAN? And people were like, they still didn't seem to be that impressed with his performance uh, at, at, at that qualifier. Here, he's just wrecked envious. In slump aside, whatever you want to say about it, he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with players that you would say individually, whatever's going on in the team, are some of the best in the world. So this is a real coming-of-age performance for, from him. But I really like the makeup of this Gambit team. The reason I said they were going to be envious here is because, first of all, the Slump Envious are in, are absolutely, it's, it's horrendous, it's unparalleled, it's unprecedented, right, Virtus Pro, uh, you know, they, they, they're actually probably better off right now, it seems. Uh, and even with the likes of MBK here, yeah. you know, going big, who is MBK for me, probably has a claim to be the most rounded and complete and consistent French player at the moment. Uh, you know, Gambit have got a very good, well-balanced team. You know, Hooch is a great in-game leader. Uh, you know, Thorin's known him a long time. I've had the pleasure of going out and partying, partying with him at ESWCs and stuff. He's a great guy. And he's actually started to put the pieces together from, from players who were almost like misfits and cast-offs from other teams. And I, I say I actually rate Gambit as a better team than CLG. I mean, this guy here, Mo, when he got kicked from the old Hellraisers lineup, it made no sense because he'd just come into being their most statistically strongest player. They had that ridiculous run at the Ace of Predator Masters while Mo was the MVP there. So, and they decided he was surplus to requirements. And now with Gambit Gaming, he's kind of having the last laugh because, again, I, I think this is these guys really have the opportunity to fly the flag for that CIS region, no doubt about it. So, a hugely impressed performance for Gambit. You know, we're going to talk a lot about Envious, but we've absolutely got to give plaudits here uh, to Gambit. Yeah.
Well, I mean, the cool thing about someone who's always been known, it's it's the funniest thing because it's someone who's known as that onliner, like like Waylander. It's like, like, that's the reputation you want. That means you're doing something right. Oh, you, yeah. you can't name a, like one of the top players in the world right now who wasn't at one point considered an onliner by the community. Yeah. That's just like a rite of passage. Olaf was known as like just a, just a pugger, just an online pugger in, in that scene for a while before he blew up. Uh, JW as well, no one thought that he was going to be able to do anything with that play style. It's supposed to be very online, very erratic. Absolutely. He was going to be able to be a top player. All these guys, I mean, even, even in you know other teams, even in the Danish team, even in the North American scene, all these stars go through that phase of being an onliner. So you obviously need these land performances to back that up at some point, and it's good that he's got this under his belt. That can help you build up some confidence for the next one. And then you go into that and you go, I've done it before. Now you have that experience. And obviously the big implication you have to think about here is, okay, CLG still has to play Astralis. We can't write them off entirely, but it's very likely Astralis is going to win that match. Yeah. Suddenly CLG is playing Gambit for a chance to go through the qualifier. So we're going to have a surprise second place no matter what, because I don't know anyone, in fact, I don't think any of us analysts had CLG or Gambit coming out second. Everyone was no. pretty sure it was going to be Envious second, first or second. So already we're probably going to have a surprise team making a legend spot. And yeah. imagine if Gambit makes the legend spot. Oh, be actually, amazing. They have some legendary CSGO players, yeah. but they're supposed <laughs> to be sure. washed up. Yep. Yep. And even yep. in the CIS region, it's supposed to be the other teams that are good now. Yeah. Final thought for you then. Oh, well, j just that, you know, the, they got to they gotta squash the beef, these French guys. They got to squash the beef because there's a good team made up of French French players, but it's neither of the two here. And in fact, at this rate, the only thing that's French that's going to be left in America is going to be the Statue of Liberty, because none of them are playing good at the moment. It's like, it, it's ridiculous. They, they've got to go back to the drawing board, because this isn't working. Envious have got real, real problems. Yeah. This isn't a phase. This is really, really bad. I mean, it's safe to say we're going to see some roster changes. Well, I mean, it's, even Summers in the back room going like, no, I'm not, I'm not French. I'm <laughs> yeah, not now French. He's not, I'm, I'm not North American. North American. I'm North American, I that's swear. That's bull right there, I tell you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's going to do it for this segment. We have one more elimination match. That's going to be G2 and North American's favorite, Cloud9. Who is going to keep their dreams alive and who's going to end it right here today?